hi I'm Chloe and today I'm going to show you how to edit a photo in a way that makes it look like a painting, how to change dress colours and how to just make fairy tale images in regards to editing. So today I am editing one of my favourite portraits that I've ever taken, a Cinderella photo um, that was taken at Daniel's Mill. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a fine art photographer based in Wolverhampton in the UK. I actually offer workshops in this location with this model and I can bring this dress along or any other ball gown that you want. So please check out my events and search in the description and my blog. I have so much information there. But anyway, we're going to get started today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this photo, yellow, drab, nothing special to be honest, to this photo, which makes it look so much more painterly, vintage and lovely in my opinion. So the first thing that we're going to do is I noticed that there was a lot of yellow in this image, like the dress is yellow, the walls are yellow, it just doesn't, doesn't look great. So what we're going to do is change all of that. So the way in which I do the majority of my editing is through adjustment layers. So we're just going to press this little icon down here and then we're going to go to the hue and saturation layer okay and what i want to do is press this little hand and that will pick the color that you want to change so you're not changing the entire image so here we go so we're just going to drag the dress and then drag it down so that drags down the saturation to a minus 100 and then we're just going to lighten it up a little bit there we go as you can see just from that one one layer it makes the dress from i can't oh, okay so it makes the dress and the walls and everything from this like sort of off yellow not very nice tone to just pure white and i think it just well not pure white but like an off white and i think it just looks beautiful like it goes so far so quickly in regards to making the photo look like a painting now this does depend on the image let's be honest um, I think the reason why this works is because the lighting um, and because it was indoors as well, there wasn't a lot of contrast in this image, but you can just see from her face, especially with her red lips, they just sort of stand out. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Now, next, we're going to go on to curved layers. Now, I love curved layers because I do the majority of my editing from them. So we're just going to go adjustment, curves, and then what I want to do is just add a little bit of contrast back to this image because it is quite flat. So what we're going to do is grab here. So this will select our, heart, our shadow, sorry. So we're just going to drag it down just a little bit. There we go. Just added a little bit of contrast. Not a huge change, but over time, all of these really simple edits will add up to make a lot. So now what I want to do is really flatten the image and make it appear painterly. So we're going to add another curves layer. And one of the best ways that you can do this is by crushing your blacks and your whites. So I do this in this image. So if you go right to the end and lift it up, you can see the shadows go from more of a black colour to a grey colour. Now that's going a lot in regards to flattening the colours and making it look more painterly. And we're going to do exactly the same with the whites. there we go so a lot of people will do this in regards to photography it's a really really popular editing technique um now i want to sort of add a little bit of tone back into the image so we're just going to drag that bring that back here bring that back to the middle and then and then you can see we've got like a very 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 slight s curve here um, and a lot of this is just personal preference. Like I can't say for a definite why I use that particular edit, just the fact that it looked cool at the time. So just go through when you're editing and just experiment because you never know what you're going to run into. That hue saturation thing was a total fluke and when I figured it out, I was really, really happy. <laughs> so now we're going to go on to colour toning. So the way in which I'm going to do this is use selective colour. So adjustment, selective colour. And we're going to go on the reds. So I'm just going to play about, let me see, I have done this before, I'm not just like, yeah, this is totally what I'm doing straight off the bat. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it does depend on every image, it's not like, I, I mean, I suppose you can use like presets and things like that, but for me, 
I don't know, I think it depends on every image. Not every preset goes with every image. And a lot of the time, like, when I do use a preset or an action or whatever, I like to build on it just to make it my own. I don't know whether that's just me. So we've got the reds. Next thing that we're going to do is go on to the yellows. And the reason why I do the selective colour separately for each layer is because you might go back and think, oh, I think that particular red is just a little bit too much and then you can go and adjust the opacity like i just prefer to have as many different layers as i can just in case i want to go back and change something and it makes it a lot easier when you're going back and recording these videos to them so um we're gonna go on to yellows um minus minus there we go and all of these together just don't make and these are very subtle subtle edits but i think all together they make a really really big difference so you can see it's just sort of taken the color out a little bit so but i mean i think when i go through and edit things afterwards i realize actually you've done something and then undone it and then it just doesn't make any sense but when you're editing it is a case of just experimenting so now we're going to go on to neutrals okay so neutral so the rule is white neutrals and blacks will make a huge difference so these top colors you can play around with the sliders a little bit more and be a little bit more dramatic with them with these any tiny effect is going to make a huge difference so we only want to be going like a couple either way unless like you want your picture to look green like that in which case go for it um but in regards to, to me who prefers just a little bit more natural editing i prefer just to keep it really really soft so plus two here So I'm leaving that as it is, and then the black top too. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to add another curved layer. <laughs> I love curved layers. But um, instead of just doing the exposure for the RGB, we're going to go onto blue. So this is going to affect the blue tones. So you bring the curve up to add blue down to reduce blue. So we're just going to do the same, bring that up a little bit, and that'll just add just a little hint of blue to the shadows. Bring that back to where it was. And then we're just going to take a little bit of blue from the highlights. Again, I don't know why, I just did it, so. Do, 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 and then. Oh, I forgot to say, so the neutrals, I obviously thought it was a bit much, so I brought the opacity back to 60. And that's the thing, like, you can make an edit and then think, oh, actually, like, that's a bit too much, and then just bring it back. You can put it on 10, so it doesn't make... A huge a huge amount of difference because i think like i said when you build them it does um right okay so now now the last thing in regards to color toning that we're going to do is add another curves layer but this time we're going to do it on the red now the majority of this image is like a red or a brown or something so to me this is going to make a lot of difference so we're going to go on red and i'm going to do exactly the same that i've done sort of bring those up And then do, 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 do. there we go so that's it in regards to color toning let's just see a before and after that's not right so you can see you can see the difference and like i said i really fluked out with this photo i don't know how to recreate it at all but it just so happens that this particular photo looks painterly. This is the kind of stuff that I really want to do. So now what we're going to do is add some textures, which will really add in regards to the painterly look. So both of these textures I took on my own on the day. 
I would really, really encourage you just to, you know, as you're taking photos, if painterly images are something that you want to get into, just take pictures of like, the floor, of the walls, of the sky, um, and add them in later because you every single texture is going to be different and then that texture is unique to you. No one's going to go and get it off Google or anything like that. So let's just, they're 5% battery, so I need to hurry up. So what we're going to do is so we're going to open our first texture in Photoshop um, like this. If I put it on the image, it will also add blue and I don't want that. I just want the textures from the clouds. This is a photo of the sky. So we're just going to desaturate it like that and open image just to make it a little bit easier. So we don't have to faff about with doing that in actual Photoshop. So press the grabby key. It's official name. And T is going to free transform it, so we're just going to slot it into place. And then we're going to go on to hard light. So you can see, like, so now we're going to change our blending mode. So you can see with every blending mode, the effect of the texture is different. So I went on hard light, and you can see it just looks almost like a dust, but that's a little bit too much. So we're just going to put it on, I think it was 30. So it just looks like it's a little bit of like a faded painting or photograph or something like that. Okay, and then we're going to add the second texture and then we are done. I didn't sharpen this image. I would suggest that you do um, just because I think it makes your photos look better. But, you know, we live and we learn. So we're going to go to the second one that I did. We're going to go to the second texture that I took. So this was a picture of my car window because it had rained outside the co-op as we stopped off after <laughs> coming back from the mill. So I really like this because you've got like the sort of rain spatters and you've also got the trees and then the sky. And I think it just makes for a really interesting image. So let's pop that in Photoshop open it up we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before so we're going to desaturate it so that it doesn't affect the colors we're only looking for texture here for this particular edit and then we're going to grab it pop it on here control and command to free transform and then with this one i think i did soft light but you can see like every individual one so yeah so you can see here it is literally just affecting the textures it looks like there's like some sort of water on it which makes sense but i don't really want it to be that crazy so we're just going to bring the opacity again back to 30. and then yeah we're done finished so yeah so you can see that even though we haven't added that many layers actually the difference from the start to the end is quite a big difference and then what i would do is take this edit drag all of the layers over to a different different photo from the same set and then just sort of tweak it layer by layer to make it fit but yeah i really really love this image i got really really lucky with the editing here and the lighting and everything i don't know how to create that particular image but this is how it works for that and it might work for your own photos so yeah so thank you so much for watching so again I do offer events and workshops with these particular elements and I also on my blog give you a lot of information on where you can find models to work with you for free in the way that I did with this photo shoot and how you can find the dresses including the one that I found on this particular shoot so yeah thank you very much for watching bye